how's everyone doing? This is Agatha and you're still with me. This is all about Agatha. And um, this is actually a very unexpected video. Um, I have been really busy with school stuff, work stuff, and a lot that's happening lately in my life. Um, so uh, there are a couple of comments that um, I haven't been able to answer. And I've just thought of, of creating this video. I, I wanted to do a live stream actually, but I don't think there's... I'm going to be lots of people that uh, is going to join. So I might do that next time so that we can um, have a live question and answer portion for whatever questions you might have for whatever, you know, topics or contents that I usually discuss on my channel. But for now, I will just be recording this. And um, my goal for today is to answer all of the comments that have been left on my YouTube channel. So if you have asked a question uh, about anything that's uh uh if you have asked any question on my videos as a comment and if you have also messaged my page uh, i have a facebook page called explore with agatha and there's also another one all about agatha so some people have been messaging me there um i have been able to answer some questions but i've there's a couple that have uh there, there's a couple that's left there so i will try to answer that in this video as well yes so please stay until the end of this video Okay, let's start with the YouTube comments first. All right, so we have from Yelly. Hi, Agatha, this is really helpful. Thank you. Oh, you're very welcome. I'm really glad to know that it was helpful. And uh, if you could please um, share my channel, share my videos, I really appreciate it. And please don't forget to subscribe, like my videos, and you know, continue to interact with me. Thank you, Yelly. And we have a question from AirPags. Hi, ma'am. Pwede po ba ma-assess sa ICAST ang vocational course? Two years graduated. At paano kung nag-close na din school ko? Saan ako mag-request? Um, for ICAST, I would say yes. Uh, they assess courses. Actually, they even assess um, undergraduate courses. So I myself, I took a Bachelor of Science in Nursing, um, but I wasn't able to finish four years, so I stopped when I was in third year. But they were able to issue me a two-year associate degree of certificate or diploma, and that's what I used for my ICAST assessment. So yes, um, that two years vocational course, I would say, uh, this is not um, an answer directly from ICAST, so this is just my own personal opinion. I would say yes, go ahead with ICAST. They're not very strict with that. Um, from what I know, WES, um, West World Educational Services, is the one that requires that a program has been finished before they can do an assessment on that. Now, if your school has closed, uh, I had this experience because I studied in an international abroad, uh, sorry, I studied in an international school abroad and, and that school has already closed. So what I did, um, this is for a secondary uh, institution, so a high school uh, institution. So what I did was I went to, um, I think, Ched still handles this commission in uh, higher education. So I just I, I went there. I, I submitted a letter of request and I did send out. Um, I there there are a couple of documents that they require, uh, like birth certificate. But I, I'll try to to remember those. But you can call them. So what I did was I I went there. I submitted my documents and then there's a little bit of a time frame where you have to wait. They have to prepare documents and then when I got back there, I actually um I just got a certificate that I was a student of this school and that this school has already closed. Now, unfortunately, they were not able to give me a copy of transcripts and um, you know, the grades just because my school was not they said they weren't able to forward that document over to them so i am thinking if the, your school has forwarded that to um, the department of education before they actually closed if they have a copy of that they will be able to um, uh, give that to you and then you can use that for your assessment so the certificate is very important um, so that um, the assessment body will be able to know what's going on and there yeah so uh, what I did was uh, commission in higher education. 
uh, you may also try contacting DepEd uh, hotline. So that's what I did. And fortunately, um, there was uh, I had a batchmate who already went through the process. So I was able to ask her a couple of questions too. Okay. And next we have Shara's vlogs. Miss Agatha, I want to thank you for starting this series. So this is for the Lupus Chronicles. I'm newly diagnosed and still learning about our disease every day. I got emotional listening to everyone's stories. Listening also made me feel like I'm not so alone. So thank you. You were a great facilitator. I'm looking forward to more episodes from your channel. I will share this video so Lupus Support Group Philippines. Uh, I will share this video so Lupus Support Group Philippines. I P.S. I also wish to be able to share my story someday to raise awareness. Hi, Shara. Thank you so much for the very inspiring message. Um, messages like this uh, are actually the reason why I want to keep doing that. Um, it was supposed to be a weekly or a twice a month um, session, but um, due, to, due to current circumstances like uh, the, the storm that happened in the Philippines. So uh, we'll just wait for that to pass and hope everybody's fine, everybody's safe. But um, I'm still looking for volunteer speakers. So if you are interested, please message me uh, on my Facebook or uh, yeah, on my Facebook page and let me know. Uh, I have also posted on Lupus Support Group Philippines and Hope for Lupus Foundation group about the next sessions that I'm interested in doing. So you can take a look at that information too. But hopefully we can do the next session by next week or in the next week. So I'm already arranging that. I am currently in um, speaking terms with some guest speakers that um, have also volunteered for the next few sessions. So I'm looking forward to speaking with you, Shara. Next is, uh, we have a comment from D. Krim. Hello, so inspiring. You're good in presenting. Are you an honor student back in the Philippines? Okay, so this is for uh, the sneak peek of classes in Bow Valley College. So this is where I was presenting. So thank you so much, D. Uh, thank you uh, for appreciating. I actually had, uh, that was a hard presentation because there were very, uh, very strict limitations where there is limited slides and you're only allowed to talk for that 20 seconds. So it's a, it's a Pecha Kucha style presentation and that's the first time I've done it. And we had no practices before that because um, we were in a cramming stage. It was finals and um, yeah, there wasn't really enough time to practice. So thank you so much that you think it went good. <laughs> but yes, um, we had a high score for that. So poise under pressure. Uh, I am, yeah, I, I have been in uh, honor rolls and I've had um, medals as well given during my uh, education uh, history, I, I guess, yes. Next is from Amila. What is the IELTS score BVC Business Administration Diploma? Uh, now, uh, for Bow Valley College, So I'm trying to search Bow Valley College language requirements. So for English language proficiency requirements, if you want to um, submit your application with Bow Valley College. Now, so usually, as if, if you check on their website, for IELTS academic, your minimum required score, the minimum required score would be 6.0 with minimum band score 6.0 for each subsection. There, that's for IELTS academic. And I guess they accept Pearson test of English and TOEFL. So you can actually check their uh, specific requirements. That also depends on the program. But as of the moment, there's restrictions with IELTS testing centers because of the COVID-19 pandemic. So they have an online language testing uh, that they accept right now. So they have the dual la dual lingo language test. Uh, yeah, so that's effective immediately for fall 2020, winter 2021, spring and fall 2021 intakes. So Bow Valley College will not require IELTS. You can take the dual, la dual lingo language test online. And um, Duolingo score required for most programs is 95 to 100 overall score. And for recreation therapy, 85 to 90. Now, there's also a way where you don't have to take any more tests. You can, all, you can 
um, just submit transcripts for high school education three years okay uh, for post-secondary education so this is the college you only need to submit a transcript of uh, completion of one year where the school has been using English as the medium of instruction. Now also you can prove your language proficiency, your English language proficiency, your English language proficiency by um, um, submitting a medium uh, a certificate of English medium. It basically states that the medium of instruction in that college or in that university is English so they will accept that so I hope that helps um, Amila um, so I, ha I hope that helps if you have any more questions let me know uh, is and she has another uh, question is it easier to find part-time jobs around Calgary now um, there's a little bit of a difference right now because of the COVID-19 pandemic so it's quite harder to get jobs right now I I think that's not limited to Calgary, um, but it's, it's, it's basically the whole wide world. But uh, pre-COVID, and e even now, um, there are still jobs that are available. So you just have to make sure that um, you know, you're not looking for office jobs, you're not looking for a supervisory or managerial position at this time. There are lots of hirings uh, here, especially for entry levels, and mostly in the fast food chains. It's, it's easy, I would say, um, because there's no experience required, mostly. Uh, no work experience, uh, doesn't matter if you finished high school or uh, if you finished college, no degrees required. Uh, yeah, so uh, fast food chains, some restaurants, so those, uh, that type of jobs are the easiest ones to get here. And usually those are the jobs for um, new immigrants or um, temporary uh, temporary foreign workers or international students those are those are uh, the easiest jobs to um, get into for example Tim Hortons um, ca uh, counter attendant cashier baker uh, what else uh, there's also Wendy's Walmart so merchandiser or um, you know cashiers as well uh, what else Burger King uh, a lot of Filipinos just not, just make sure that you're not picky when it comes to what type of job you want to get into uh, I'm pretty sure you'll find you'll find one there are a couple of um, job websites that you can try my recommended one would be indeed so www.indeed.ca uh, or Kapolis job bank as well and referrals are actually the greatest form of advertising so once you come here um, you may ask around friends, may, you know, make connections. They can refer you to this or the best one would be to walk into the stores. So just print out a couple of copies of your resume and go store to store. They accept it. And um, I think that's actually the best way that you can go about it. Uh, yeah, because they can interview you on the spot or they definitely will call you back to set an interview schedule. And we have, thank you, Mila. Thank you so much. And then we have another question from Kim Erica Villa. Hi, Kim. Thank you so much for watching my videos. Now, your question is, hello, Agatha. Thanks for the very informative video. I am planning to enroll for September 2021 intake. Just a question. Do you have to submit an IELTS academic test result or the general one will do? Okay. Now, um, English language requirement for Bow Valley College is specifically academic because the academic is for um, educational institutions. So yes, you would have to take the academics. But as I mentioned earlier, you actually, um, it is not mandatory to submit an IELTS exam. You can either go with a Duolingo language test, uh, TOEFL, uh, Pearson test of English, and you can, e you can submit an English medium uh, of instruction, which I think is, is the easiest one to get uh, because most institutions anyway back in the Philippines um, have English as their medium of instruction. So you can take advantage of that so that you don't have to um, take an IELTS exam. But if you're wanting to, but if you're wanting to go uh, take the SDS or the uh, student direct stream, which is the express um, application processing, 
then uh, I would say you, you can uh, take the IELTS academic test to that dual purpose. Thanks, Erica. I hope you continue watching my videos. Please share my channel and let's continue to engage more. From Joanna Rose Maniago Makalinkag. Hi again. Can I ask you regarding transport credits in BBC? Did you apply for transport credit? This is a very interesting question. I did not apply for trans uh, transport credit, but I actually had um, the intention of applying for a transfer credit, but uh, it was a lengthy process, so I didn't uh, want to go through with it. And also, since my last education was about nine, ten years, nine years ago before I started this program, and it's a different course, so I thought of okay, I will just um, take all courses fresh, brand new, and I will not, you know, uh, have any transfer credits. Um, assessed. But yes, you can um, have uh, your old credentials assessed. Anyway, if you get one to two credits transferred, that's also going to be a huge savings on your pocket because each course here costs about 1500 Canadian dollars. So that's really going to help you save a lot. But there is a limitation of how many subjects you may transfer or how many credits you can transfer because it has an impact on your postgraduate work permit. So yes, not, for example, if you took a business administrate business program in the Philippines and you're taking also another business program here. So we're, we might be thinking that those have the same courses possibly, and a lot of them can be transferred, um, but there's only a number of credits that you can transfer. So I'm not really sure about the exact one, uh, but uh, I'll try to link, um, the website or the section in the Bow Valley College website uh, just so you can check it out uh, where that is or the um, the department that handles this is actually very responsive as well so you can have you can ask them those questions but uh, yes that was my experience with transfer credit and you also you have to submit transcript of records uh, not just transcript of records really they're I forgot the term of it, but that is where, that's a document where um, each subject has its own definition, uh, the hours of those classes and what was it focused on, just so they can check if it's the same uh, course here, same subject here, and see if they can transfer that credit over. Yeah, so thank you, Joanna. Thank you for that question. And JC Kalubaki. Hi, JC. Thank you so much for watching my videos. Your question is, Hi, Agatha. With SDS, do you still need to prepare and submit the statement of purpose? Yes, absolutely. So this is a question that's been asked um, a couple of times. So it's my pleasure to... Um, clear this out. So the SDS requirements that I have mentioned on my video are the documents on top of the regular documents. So those are extra documents that you need to fulfill to make your application qualify for the SDS. So you still need to prepare and submit the regular documents. Okay. All right. I hope that clears it up. Uh, if not, if you have any follow up questions, please let me know. Pierre Salas. Hi, Agatha. Thanks for the video. I have applied to BBC. I would like to know where can I get a sample letter of support in order to get the study permit. I have my own, but I would like to compare. Thanks for that question, Pierre. Now, this is one on my next to-do list. Um, I will be making a video of a letter of support. If you actually want to get a couple of copies, you may send me an email and I'll try to send it to you. Or you can um, go to Facebook pages. We have um, study permit DIY. Uh, I'll, I'll link some of the Facebook groups um, where they share a couple of documents and one is the letter of support. Uh, but yes, please uh, stay tuned. I will do the video this week and I'll also be posting it this week as we've had lots of sponsors during our application. So definitely we've made tons of letter of support. And we actually did not have any negative feedback on those. Our sponsors were um, all accepted. We were approved. So I would guess our letter of support would, would help out other people as well. So yes, yeah, stay tuned for that. Thank you so much, Pierre. And financially smart, very informative. Salamat. Thank you so much. Salamat din po sa paninood. 
Uh, Samantha Pavlos, how to apply to learn English at Bull Valley College? Um, so first step is uh, you can go to their website. They have an English language um, program. So I'm pretty sure they do have that. Yes, they have English language learning program. So this is where if you're new to Canada, you want to improve your English or uh, international student um, who wants to study here, then there's different types of English language learning program that may fit your needs. So they have this on their website. And this is also per application, uh, per application basis. So the next term opens up on January 2021 and the applications are now open. So um, you may call them a uh, prospective student representative at 403-410-1402. And you can also email info at bowvalleycollege.ca. So that's the first step if you want to get information about that program. Info at bowvalleycollege.ca. All right. I hope that answers your question, Samantha. Thank you so much. And next we have ANDC channel. Nice song, nice voice, very soothing. It kept me relaxed now. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, ugh, it cringes, it gives me cringe every time I hear my voice. But yeah, thank you so much for appreciating it. Hi, from April Aprilin Cano. Hi, what document did you attach to support your parents' relatives' pledge of financial support? Oh, um, actually, April, um, I have released a video of this. Um, it's my first, uh, it's my latest release, I guess, or my second to the last. Um, but please check it out. I have um, made a video of what the documents and requirements are needed for your sponsors. So please check it out. Um, if there's any more questions, um, please let me know. Cerveza TV, nice info. Thank you so much. JB Foxtrot. Okay, so I have received my BBC account details, but not the offer of admission. I actually even requested a letter of acceptance ahead of time without knowing that I am still not yet enrolled. The procedure is quite confusing or maybe I'm just new to this. The latest email I received from them is a welcome guide for international learners. What should I do next? Any advice would be of great help. So let me just understand this. You have already received your My BBC account details, but not the offer of admission. So yes, you will receive that first. And in a couple of weeks, I got my offer of admission in two weeks after I got the welcome, you know, My BBC account email. So just wait for it. Uh, you've actually sent this two weeks ago, so I'm hoping that you have that offer of admission. So once you get that offer of admission, um, you will have to pay the confirmation fee. So that's one thousand five hundred Canadian dollars. Once you pay that confirmation fee, so there is a deadline to that. You don't have to pay it right away. It's usually uh, three to four weeks uh, once you receive that offer of admission. Pay the confirmation fee. After you pay the confirmation fee, depending on how you paid them bank transfer white transfer takes a little bit of a while for them to receive it uh, but if you pay online i got my letter of acceptance the letter of acceptance is what you will use for your study permit application okay so mine was sent the electronic copy was sent to my email two days after i pay the confirmation fee okay and then once you receive that confirmation fee that's it you can proceed to your study permit application so I hope that answers your question, JB. Thank you so much for tuning in and I hope you will stay and watch my other videos as well. Kevin Velasco. Hi, Agatha. Thanks for the videos. Quick question. What were the main challenges about finding a house? Since you're new to the country and to Calgary, there's no credit history or nothing. What did you do or recommend in this matter? Hi, Kevin. This is a very interesting question too. I was actually planning on making a full video about this. So, but I will answer your question briefly. Um, so main challenges of finding a house, um, something that um, I could think of at the top of my head right now is the budget. And, um, yeah, I would say the budget as well. And uh, since you're new here to Canada, if you, you have to put in like a rental application, that's usually how it goes, rental application. And if you don't have a credit score, then you may be rejected, rejected for that application. Also, landlords here are um, very conscious with the number of people. So for example, if you're a family of five, you have three kids, there's 
you need to get a house or a place where and you require two to three bedrooms so there are certain restrictions to that so that's one of the challenges they would not um some would really reject you because you know if, if you're a lot um if you're four or five depending on them so those are some of the challenges we've actually spoken to like 20 before we actually found our first one because they would not accept us um, as uh, we were a lot compared to the space of the house you know if, if um, the house isn't so big uh, and there's only a few bedrooms so yeah those restrictions actually made us uh, those restrictions actually gave us a hard time in, in uh, getting our accommodation so yes yeah, so if you don't have a credit history that might be hard so what we did was uh, word of mouth referrals from friends and families and especially we are Filipino so Filipino landlords here are very lenient and they're very understanding especially if they know that you're new here so you don't have a credit score yet so how are you supposed to like pass an application with a credit check right so that's what we did we looked for Filipinos or, and we also looked for referrals that really do not uh, require the rental application and, and uh, you know, background checks and all of those. So you may want to try that too. Yes. Or you can also look into Airbnb. Um, yes. Uh, but, but Airbnbs are on a monthly, uh, daily, usually on a daily uh, rental, but they would also accept monthlies. And those do not require credit checks. So you may discuss with the owner. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Gavin. I hope that helps. Cody, hi Cody, thank you for the love. Okay, so last four questions for today from Christian Credo. Hi Christian, hello. If I will pursue to study in Bow Valley College with business admin diploma, what are the possible job opportunities there? And gaano ko po kabilis mabaw yun nagastos ko sa tuition and all. Thanks and stay safe. Now, uh, regarding the financial side, that actually depends. Um, if you have um, a spouse, that will be on open work permit then i would say it's it's going to be much faster for you to rake in that return of investment <laughs> or to get back all those uh, that you spent but it might still be about a year or two to be honest with you it depends on your expenses as well um but i have a cost of living in calgary uh that you you may want to compute your expenses and we also have the wages and taxes in alberta so you may also want to do that so that you can uh, check out your budget yeah and uh, business administration so i i am going to create um a, pro a video about all the programs and courses and the possible job opportunities but uh, just for uh, just to answer your question a couple of jobs that um, you may look into Okay. This is for business administration, general business major. Okay, so uh, graduates graduates typically find employment as management trainees, general managers, assistants, managers, sales representatives, sales managers, personal officers in retail, financial services, insurance, human resources, not for profit sales, and the marketing industries. So that would uh, that would also depend on which major you're gonna get. There are a couple of majors when you come into when you take the business administration diploma. Okay. Thanks, uh, Christian. That was just a very brief question, um, just so that we can go through this. But stay tuned. I will do a separate video for that so that we can discuss that further. Raya Jabin. Hello, I have applied for Health and Human Service Manager, one-year program in Bow Valley. Can you please tell me the job prospects of this program in Alberta? Health and Human Service Management. Okay, so like what I mentioned, I will be doing a separate vlog, but let's just quickly try to see if I can give you a brief information about that. Health and Human Services. Um, it's actually more into employment support programs and services, human resources as well. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, you could either go.
go with the um, health service administrator, health service administrator, health service associate. So this is more in organization and and planning for um, healthcare. So I'll try to create a, a separate video for this and I will research some um, answers to this as well. And from Annalisa Florentino, last question for this video. Hi Agatha, I just want to ask if you have an idea if studying in Alberta, how high is the chance to be a permanent resident afterwards? Thank you and looking forward to your answer. Great question. Now we have a separate um, stream for, AI, for Alberta. We have AINP. So if you look into that AINP, there are several um, ways that um, we can be permanent residents here. But I guess the remarkable one would be the postgraduate work permit, wherein here in Alberta, you only have to have six months of skilled work experience. And after you gain that six months, you can already apply for permanent residency under the AINP stream. Now, I also... Uh, I have also been, uh, I'm still a student right now, but I have been issued a notification of interest letter by the Alberta government because of my current job here in Alberta. So I work as, I work in the human resources, basically in the recruitment area. And I think that's actually in demand. So they did a draw for those they would like to nominate for the province, which is gonna give you 600 points for permanent residency. So I was sent that, um, but I will do that in a separate vlog to give you the story about that. So there's lots of chances here depending on your occupation if it's in demand here. So that's one thing. You can go through, you can go through the provincial nomination program and you can go with a six months postgraduate work permit. So if you're a graduate here and you obtain permanent uh, so if you are a graduate of an Alberta um, post-secondary institution with just six months, um, this is what I know, within just six months of, of gaining that work experience, then you can uh, already apply for permanent residency under that stream. And aside from that, of course, we have the Canadian education, Canadian experience class, wherein if you have at least minimum one year experience, this isn't in Alberta, but this is generally in Canada, then you can apply. Um, that's going to give you um, extra points for CRS. And if you reach a cutoff score, you'll be given an ITA. But um, yes, I will be doing a separate vlog about um, the streams in Alberta on how to become a the streams in Alberta for becoming a permanent residency. There's a lot. It's it's not fairly easy, but they offer lots of options that you can choose from. So that's it for today. Um, uh, I hope I was able to um, answer your questions. If you have any more questions, just leave a comment down below, and I will try to answer as much as I can. So that's only for the YouTube comments. I'm really sorry for those that have messaged me for um, my Facebook pages. I'll do that in a separate vlog for the part two. Thank you guys. Have a great day. Bye-bye.